Hello guys, good morning. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, the Explicit Tutorials. As you all know, I'm Dr. Joseph or Mr. Explicit. Please, as you are watching this video, endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment so that when I upload the new content, you'll be notified by YouTube. All right. If you know you are preparing for 2024 jam, uh, or that is UTME, post-TME, YEC, NECO, GCE, NAPTEB, JUPEB exam, or nursing examinations, endeavor to chat me up on 091 I think it again. 091 So that's my WhatsApp number. All right. So in today's class, we have elements, compound, and mysteries. All right, we'll be taking elements in today's class. The next class will be compounds, and the last one will be what? Mysteries. Now, the question is what are elements? Elements are entities that cannot be split up or that can be divided into several forms. I take it again. Elements are entities that cannot be split up or divided into several entities which means that they exist all by themselves. They cannot be split into two or more entities that are just there, all right? Of course, the, the letters used in representing these elements are called symbols. Symbols are letters used in representing elements. However, you must have seen in your textbooks or somewhere that some symbols are uh, attached to certain elements are different from the way they are spent. This could make you to be curious that what is going on? Why is that this element is having such a uh, symbol which is quite different from the way it is spelt? It is so because the symbol was extracted from their Greek or Latin name, all right? Elements are substance, are entities that can be split up or divided into two or more forms or into several forms. And I said that letters that are used to denote these elements are called symbols. And this was first uh, brought up by a scientist called Bezilos. All right, and Bezilos was the first scientist that brought about uh, an element and of course they are symbols, all right? How uh, elements are symbolically represented. All right, so that is for that. So let's take the first 20 elements, of course, that is the one you need. But when I'm treating the periodic table, I might give you the first 40 or 50 elements. But since we are discussing those elements, let me give you the first 20 elements, all right? We have hydrogen. We have hydrogen, we have helium, we have lithium, we have beryllium, we have beryllium, we have boron, we have our carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. We have fluorine. We have hydrogen helium, lithium beryllium, boron carbon, nitrogen oxygen, fluorine, fluorine, neon, sodium, hydrogen helium, lithium beryllium, boron carbon, nitrogen oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium. Magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, phosphorus, sulfur, argon, potassium, and calcium. So these are the first 20 elements. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19. And what is missing? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, osmium, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, O, oh, sulfur, chlorine, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. So these are the first 20 elements. Of course, you have 21 to 30 like scandium, uh, like Scandium, titanium, vernadium, chromium, magnesium, nickel, and whatever, and what have you. All of those, they are the that is from 21 and above. But today's class, we are focused on just the first 20 elements. All right, so hydrogen is represented as He, helium, that is hydrogen is represented as what? H, not He. Lithium is Li, beryllium is B, E, boron is just B, carbon is C. Nitrogen is N, oxygen is O, fluorine is F, neon is Ne, and of course sodium is what? Na. This is what I was referring to. So why is it Na? Why not SO or SD as the case may be? You have magnesium as Mg, you have Al, Si, P, sulfur, just S, chlorine, Cl, Argon, A, R, potassium, K, under one, then calcium, C, E. So all of these are the first 20 elements. However, of course, these are the symbols that are used to denote each element. And of course, I said that some elements have uh, different symbols from the way they are spelled because of their Greek or Latin name. Let's look at these elements. Let's look at these elements. Now I have the Latin name of sodium is natrum. So that is why it is, is denoted as what? Na. Alright? Natrum. Or let me put it. Sorry. Elements. Greek name and symbol. Elements, Greek name and what? Symbol. So I have here elements. So, oops, excuse me. I have elements. I have Greek or Latin name. And I have symbols, all right? Symbols. All right, so the first one I have here is what? Sodium. Sodium has its Latin name as what? Natural. And the symbol is what? N P. All right? The next one is potassium. Potassium is kerum, and that is why it's written as what? K. The next one is, let me read in uh, copper. Copper is cuprum, and it is, that is why it has its uh, chemical uh, symbol as what? Cu, copper. Then four, let me bring in, let me just bring it zigzagly, gold. Gold is oral, and that is why it's expressed as what? A U. Five, I have silver. Silver is adjectana, that is A G. Then six, uh, I have mercury. Mercury is hydra. Hydra, gyrum, hydra, gyrum, that is H, G, all right? Then seven, I have uh, another one as uh, tin. Tin is 
that now. So that is why it is revealed as what? S N. So you see, they have different uh, symbols from the way they are spelled. It's it. I will give you ion. Ion is ferrum. That is F E. Then nine. I have uh, antimony. Antimony. Antimony is represented as what? Stibion. That is what? S B. Right. So these are elements, the Greek or Latin name and what symbols. Natural ferrum, cuprum, orum, agitinum, agrajurum, sternum, ferrum, and what? Stibium. So that is its element and the Latin name. I believe everything has been dropped, nothing is missing. So please, Bezalus was actually involved in all of these. Now, I think elements such as metals and non metals undergo a phenomenon called polymorphism. If I don't call it polymorphism, mm -hmm. I'll call it what? Allotropy. Allotropy is the process whereby elements occur in the same physical state, all right? It is the occurrence of elements in the same physical state, in the same physical state. Please take note that not all elements undergo polymorphism or allotropy. They've asked which of the which of the following pairs of elements undergo allotropy? Please take note that phosphorus, which which is uh, that is phosphorus, which are the which are the red and white phosphorus. Carbon. Carbon exists in two forms, two allotropic forms, which are the crystalline forms. You have the, we have graphite and diamond, and the non-crystalline you have what is your coal, charcoal, and coal. Of course, the crystalline form is also called the amorphous form. Another example that can undergo allotropy is what? Oxygen. Oxygen has its allotropes as dioxygen, which is O2, and trioxygen, O3, that is ozone. Another element is tin. Tin can also undergo um, allotropy, that is white and red tin. The next one is what? Sulfur. Sulfur has it, I, it has two allotropic forms, right? The crystalline form, which are the which are the uh, rhombic or prismatic or alpha sulfur, and the monoclinic or beta sulfur. That is, those are the two crystalline forms of what um, sulfur. The non-crystalline form is the amorphous, or right? that is that is elastic in form. The the the, the monoclinic is needle shaped, while the rhombic sulfur is octahedral. Please, I take it again. Phosphorus, carbon, oxygen, tin, and sulfur can all undergo uh, polymorphism or what? allotropy. Please take note that chemical reaction is what is common between allotropes, all right? Chemical reaction is common between allotropes. Now, so phosphorus has its allotropes as red and white phosphorus. Carbon has its allotropes as crystalline form, which are diamond and graphite. All right, the non-crystalline form like the charcoal, like the coal, the soot, or lampblack. And of course, there are also the amorphous form. Oxygen has the allotropes as dioxygen O2 and trioxygen O3, ozone. Then tin has the red and white tin allotropes. Sulfur, the rhombic or prismatic or alpha sulfur, which is octahedral and the monoclinic or prismat or the monoclinic or the beta sulfur it is needle shaped and the rhombic or prismatic or alpha sulfur is what octahedral but the amorphous form of sulfur is what a needle like it is it is elastic in nature please it's elastic in nature please the process that is used to extract sulfur from under the water is called the fracture process the process that is used to extract sulfur from uh, that is under the water is called fracture process. And this process occurs in the presence of a catalyst called aluminium, aluminium what? Oxide. 
that is Al2 O3. So during the extraction of sulfur through fracture process, which of the following is used as a catalyst? Please take note the answer is what? Aluminium oxide. The decomposition of potassium permanganate to form uh, potassium chloride and oxygen occurs in that is potassium permanganate when is uh when is okay sorry not potassium permanganate sorry as potassium tetraoxyl chloride five isn't it? is it five now let me check two seven yeah this is what seven that is one two times four is eight so eight minus one seven all right i have so the and that is uh, potassium uh, tetra also chlorate seven so that is it so during the decomposition of potassium tetra also chlorate seven to form potassium chloride and oxygen the catalyst used is magnesium four oxide magnesium four oxide so please take note of that Take note that these five elements have the ability to uh, undergo allotropy or polymorphism. So at this point, we'll call it a day. Thanks for watching. You'll have a wonderful day. In our next class, we'll be looking at compounds and various examples of compounds. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe so that when I upload any content, you'll be notified by YouTube.